In today's video, we will take a look at the performance of this machine. A workstation equipped with two Intel Xeon Platinum 8280M CPUs with 28 cores each, resulting in 56 physical cores. But first, however, the question arises, is CPU rendering still worth it? And second, why using Intel Xeon CPUs at all? We will now deep dive into these questions. CPU rendering offers certain advantages over GPU rendering. While initial rendering with GPUs is faster at first glance, the limitations of GPU rendering become apparent, especially with very large 3D scenes containing a lot of 3D geometry, maybe lots of very large bitmap textures or cached solutions, such as maybe subsurface scattering. Here, GPUs quickly reach their limits due to their limited VRAM. While scenes up to 24 or maybe 48 gigabytes can fit on a GPU natively, workloads with RAM requirements significantly above that can be a real problem, because then the GPU has to outsource the workload, and which in turn slows it down considerably. Besides the computing power, the video RAM capacities on GPUs are quite expensive. High-end graphic cards are currently ranging from 48 to 64 gigabyte maybe, interconnected possibly to 96 gigabytes. However, the DDR RAM of modern workstations can easily be brought into the range of one terabyte for the same price. Speaking of large workloads, especially in the field of animation rendering, CPU rendering offers another advantage you don't want to miss. Stability. In a render node, you just install one or two CPUs, throw in enough RAM and you're happy, you're done, that's it. This is especially useful if you have to manage several render nodes in your studio, um, grouped together to form a render farm. Because CPUs don't need driver updates, graphic cards do. And that's where the trouble can start, because driver updates are released in short intervals and they're not always a guarantee for the stability of your system, let alone the executability of plugins of your 3D software. For those who want to learn more about the benefits of CPU rendering, there's a link to a corresponding section on the Corona Renderers website in the description of this video. CP rendering is still a thing and there are a lot of very good and very capable CPU render engines out there. Just to name a few, Corona Renderer, Arnold, V-Ray, Mantra, Maxwell or Pixar RenderMan. So why using Intel CPUs? Well, building a render farm is nothing you do overnight. A render farm is a quite large purchase. It requires a certain infrastructure in your studio, it requires a certain workflow in your studio, and it's nothing you just buy and throw in. It's not plug and play. So it's much more something that builds up over the years and grows with your studio and your business for, from the very beginning. In my studio, Render Baron, it all started with a Power Mac G4 back in 2001, followed up by a Power Mac G5. And these were replaced by several 12-core Mac Pros in 2010. And with that, I moved to Intel Xeon processors. In 2015, I finally moved the whole 3D production to several powerful, capable HP Z workstations. And until today, these machines were complemented and are complemented by more Intel Xeon machines, more Intel i9 machines. So over the years, my studio's render farm built up step by step, bit by bit, based entirely on Intel, Xeon and i9 machines. And why only Intel? Well, for the network-based distributed rendering in a render farm, in my case with Maxon Cinema 4D, it is essential to use a homogeneous render farm. For example, the processors should be of the same type to achieve absolutely equal render results. For that, 
Intel Xeon and Intel i9 literally go hand in hand. CPUs from other manufacturers, on the other hand, would bring in the unpredictability of slightly different rendering results. And believe me, that's something you don't want to discover in the rendered animation. Over the last decade, all Intel Xeon processors in my studio have proven to be true role models in terms of speed, stability and reliability. The machines show absolutely no thermal throttling and perfectly fulfill their specifications 24-7. But now hands on Cinebench. Cinebench is a test suite that benchmarks the speed of your computer's CPUs or CPU. It's the standard benchmark suite on the market and it's free. And by the way, I created the living room test scene for Maxon Cinebench. Here we are in Cinebench release 23. By default it runs a 10 minute render test and repeats the rendering of the test scene in several rounds. Fast forward and we have a test result after 10 minutes. Impressive 48,000 points. In direct non-stop use this dual platinum machine demonstrates an incredible speed and reliability. In everyday practice it doesn't have a single bit of thermal throttling even during extreme rendering demands which can last for days or even weeks. The machine just eats through render bucket after render bucket bravely and impresses as the fastest machine I worked with so far. By the way, this dual platinum machine is extremely powerful but its CPUs are also extremely expensive to buy. Intel's Xeon Gold CPUs, on the other hand, offer an absolutely comparable rendering performance but at about one third of the price per CPU. So I think this is worth considering. For now, I'm quite impressed by the performance of this machine. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Happy rendering!